Today we will learn sexual reproduction in plants. There are many organisms in the world such as flowering plants, humans, various animals, etc. which require male and females to produce offspring. Such a method of reproduction in which two parents participate is called sexual reproduction. Today we will discuss sexual reproduction in plants. Flowering plants, also called angiosperms, produce offspring through sexual reproduction. The reproductive organs of these plants are found in flowers. Can you tell me which are the main parts of the flower? Think, think. Let me tell you. The outer part of the flower, which looks like green leaves, is called sepal. Together, the sepals form calyx. The sepals protect the inner parts when the flower is in the form of a bud. The colorful part of the flower that looks like leaves are called petals. All the petals together are called corolla. Within the circle of petals in the flower, you will see some thin tubes, the top of which is inflated. Each of these is the male reproductive organ of the plant called stamen. The long thin tube-like part of the stamens is called the filament and the inflated upper part is called the anther. The anther generates pollen grains and carries them within it. Pollen grains are generally yellow. If you touch the anther, you will have yellow powder on your hand which are pollen grains. In pollen grains, male gametes of the plant can be found. The color of petals and their fragrance attract insects. These insects play an important role in moving pollen grains from one flower to another. In the center of the flower, you will see a jug-like part. It is called pistil. It is the female reproductive part of the plant. It has three parts. The swollen bottom part is the ovary. The middle elongated part is the style and the terminal part which may be sticky is the stigma. The ovary contains ovules and each ovule has one egg cell. Egg cell is the female gamete of the plant. There are some flowers in the world such as hibiscus flowers in which both the stamens and the pistils are present in the same flower. These are called bisexual flowers while some flowers such as papaya flowers have any one of the reproductive organs like stamen or pistil. These are called unisexual flowers. During reproduction of flowering plants, it is necessary to transfer pollen grain to stigma. We call this as pollination. If the pollen grain is transferred from the anther of the flower to the stigma of the same flower, it is called self-pollination. When pollen grain is transferred from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower, it is called cross-pollination. Pollination is done with the help of inorganic components such as air, water or biological components such as insects, animals, etc. When pollen grains are pollinated on the stigma of a flower, there is development of a tube from the pollen grain which passes through the style and reaches to the embryo sac of an ovule. Two male gametes enter the embryo sac from the pollen grain. The ovule consists of an embryo sac that is oval shaped with eight cells 
and one of its cell is the egg cell or female gamete. A male gamete released from the pollen tube fuses with the female gamete to produce a zygote. The process of fusion of germ cells so as to form zygote is called fertilization. Similarly, the second male gametes fuses with two polar nuclei to form an endosperm. Since there are two types of fusion in the embryo sac, fusion of germ cells and fusion of male gametes with the bipolar nuclei, hence such kind of fertilization is called double fertilization. After fertilization, the zygote divides several times in the ovule causing its transformation in the embryo. Endosperm provides nutrition to the embryo. At the same time, the ovary changes into fruit. During this activity, other parts of the flower like sepals, petals, stamens, stems and stigma fall off. The transition of the ovule occurs in a hard covering called a seed. The seed protects the embryo. A seed usually consists of a seed coat, cotyledon and an embryo axis. The plumule of the embryonic axis are future shoot and the radical is the future root. Cotyledons are inflated structures in which the food of the embryo is preserved. In a favorable condition, the embryo develops into seedlings, which we call germination. The newborn develops and transforms into a new plant. So now you must have understood the sexual reproduction in plants very well. For your homework, collect some flowers and try to draw their structures in your drawing book. So today we have learned Sexual Reproduction in Plants